I hate it when this happens. I lose track of time. You run out of laminate and it wraps around the roller. Yeah. Oh well, it's nothing a razor blade and like, I don't know, 15 minutes of scraping won't fix. That's better. Man, you really gotta be sure to get every little piece of toner or paper off that roller. Otherwise, it's gonna show up in the covers that you're laminating or whatever you're laminating. So, uh, I always take a, well, this is the second time that happened. Uh, yeah, I know. But you always, I take a razor and scrape it off and then I finish that off with a little bit of alcohol and really scrub it till it's a mirror finish. I'm always scared I'm gonna scratch it, but I'm assuming that that chrome coating on that roller is super strong because I haven't scratched it yet. I've been really cautious of that, but you have to scrape that stuff off. There's no other way you're gonna get that off. So somebody had asked how I got the do not care what paper size setting is on these machines. And I looked into it and this is where it's at. So they're in the paper. If we were to make a new paper in this catalog, if you go to paper size, you can change it to do not care. Uh, instead of standard custom or tab, just put do not care and it will automatically detect the paper size. That's really handy because uh, I need to do it yet, but I need to clean the catalog out and basically make a paper just by paper weight and finish. Uh, and then, then it doesn't matter if it's 12, 18, 13, 19. Uh, it, I could potentially see problems if it's custom paper, uh, which I have three or four custom sheet sizes that it might cause problems. But with the IQ, uh, it shouldn't be an issue. I also noticed that on the 1070s, you do not have this option. And I don't know if it's a, a firmware issue or a dip switch, or maybe just the older 1070s don't have this option. But in the 1070, you only have your standard custom and tab. So, sorry to those guys. Got some menus to print and some books to print and bind. See what else happens today. Thought I was gonna have to print those on the other machine, but I thought I'm on the 1200 instead. It'd be a little bit quicker. I wanted to show you guys the problem I was running into with the three knife trimmer. We have some variant in the, uh, the lengthwise. So the book goes through the cutter like this and what would happen uh, is the clamp that holds the book when it goes up to that face trim knife it would potentially go a little bit too far and then the book would be cut short I had this happen to me a couple years back and I solved the problem uh, but it happened again and what happens is there is a belt driven linear actuator that runs down the center which carries the book and that belt as it gets old will expand and then it gets loose so then as it goes down it jumps a tooth and takes your book in too far so all you have to do is tighten that up i actually wait yeah i actually i ordered a belt years ago when i was having a problem right there it is uh, because I thought I was going to have to replace the belt. Uh, but all I had to do is I took that actuator out, I shortened the belt by neither one or two notches, put it all back together, and it was tight enough to just keep on running. And it's been running for the past, I don't know, five, six years. Uh, so I have this spare belt. Uh, what, uh, 
I'm hoping all I have to do is tighten it up. So let me show you how to do that. If you're ever in the position that you need to do a rebuild on that actuator, you're gonna have to open up the front and then there's some bolts that that whole entire actuator comes out. It's the whole length of the machine. It's a big girl. It's all gonna come out the front. Uh, for the tightness adjustment, all I have to do is open the back door here and it's inside here. Sorry, it's a little dirty in here. So here is the actuator. As you can see, it runs the whole length of the machine. And these three screws here are what needs to be adjusted. So what we need to do is loosen the outside two, bring them towards us because we want to pull the belt closer to us, which will in turn make it tighter. So we loosen the outside and then tighten the inside. And that's going to draw this whole pulley that's inside there towards us and tighten it up. Don't have to go much. And then tighten the inside one. And that should draw it up up tight up against and if not snug it up a little bit you might have to try it again if it's still going to happen but just a little bit of pressure on that should solve the problem let me show you what just happened there so the belt comes in and loops back to this block and what happened is this center screw goes down and through that block so tightening it will pull it towards it and then these other screws just come in and hold that in place so that's what's happening inside there so we had to loosen these to bring them both out and then tighten this in to pull that up against these screws all right we'll try that out a little bit later but keep on running these other jobs Okay, those menus are, let's see, that's only 500 of the 2,000. The reality is it's gonna be much faster to run those on the MBO, but I just like the simplicity of doing them on the tabletop here. And then I can kind of run them as they're coming out of the machine. The reason that I'm not folding this in line with the uh, inline finisher is that just slows the machine down and it just faster to print them flat fold them offline and then I can start running my next uh, job on there which I have another job that I need to run so that's why I often take it offline and just use something else. solved they're all the correct length and there's no variation at all let's keep on going yeah I eat cake while I'm binding books don't judge me so in my last video I forgot to include how to do a slip sheet on the color machine so I'll cover that real quick here it's simple it's pretty pretty similar to the 1200 so since there's no post insertion on this machine I'm gonna be using tray 2 here which I have a slip sheet to insert uh, between books that I'm gonna be printing on 12 by 18 okay first things first is let's import the job 
Everything saved by author name. Hold. And then we want this to be duplexed. 12 by 18. And right down here, we scroll down to mixed media. New insert after last page. A slip sheet that I have assigned there. Insert. And we're off to the races. Uh, I should also mention there's another spot here in finishing that you can do the same thing. You scroll down to slip sheet and then you can put, you know, one before each copy. You can do the same sheet as the job or you can pull it from a tray like I did. Uh, they both do the same thing. Books are done like that and I think that's enough fun for one video. Uh, in case you're wondering, and somebody had asked uh, if this was actually a powered USB, and yes, it is, because I was charging the GoPro right there. Pretty cool. Anywho, thanks for watching. I'm going to finish up the day with some quotes and uh, catching up on some other things. See you next week.